This is Naomi, your hostess for this new series on the history of Fairfax County. We're going to call it Fairfax County, USA. Fairfax County's history goes all the way back to 8,000 B.C. And then, of course, came the Indians, the Revolutionary War, Civil War, War Wars, and a change in population and agriculture. We're going to tell you tonight about the history as it is today. And the history today is very, very exciting. We have almost a million people here in Fairfax County. That's what we plan in the 21st century. And another exciting event that's happening tonight is we're going to be hearing former chairman of the Fairfax County uh, Board of Supervisors ranging from the year 1972 to almost the present 1992 and you're going to see how the county has grown. At one time, the county only in 1780 had 8,000 people. Then, in the 1880s, it grew to 11,000. But between 1980 and present, it grew 47%, up to 850,000 people. So, we are going to hear right now a panel of experts and new leaders in the world, uh, our former chairman of Fairfax County. Tonight we're going to, I'm going to set the stage by, I was speaking with Jean earlier that she, this is 23 years ago that Jean was named chairperson of the board and I remember it vividly because it was about that time they stopped us from smoking in the boardroom and that had a traumatic impact on me personally. <laughs> However, in succession, we then had Jack, Audrey, and then Tom. I probably know these individuals as well as anyone around, uh, having dealt with them in moments of tenseness. And I can say this uh, without any uh, reservation. Every one of them had the interest of Fairfax County at heart in their mind. I think what I should like to do this evening is to start off and ask Jean to give you her observations, go in order of what she sees has happened and what she see or what she sees in the future to occur in the county. If I do it in that fashion and then come back at the end and allow you all to ask questions, it allows me to do something which I've always promised myself that I would do, and that is I will never say anything publicly bad about a member of the governing body of this county. With that in mind, Jean. When I took office in November of 72 and inherited a board that had taken their office in January of that year, which included Audrey and Jack. It was, an, it was an interesting board. It was the first board that had been elected in Fairfax County in which no member of the board earned his or her living in the development industry or related industries, banking, insurance, and that kind of thing, which was a departure for Fairfax County. I guess probably a departure for Northern Virginia and grew out of a an, an very uneasy feeling that many of us had had that Fairfax County was out of control. We had been growing at an absolutely horrendous rate. In the 1960s, Fairfax County population was growing so fast that we had to build one new classroom every day to keep up with the growth in the school age population. And of course, all those kids brought parents with them. My daughter was going to school during that period. She never went to a school that was not overcrowded by at least 50%. And she was in elementary school. All the kids had recess and, and, and went to the bathroom and flushed the, flushed the johns, and they ran out of water. The well went dry. So uh, things that I'm being, I'm stepping, <laughs> excuse me, all the, the tape on my floor, I'm sticking to the floor. So it was, a, it was a time of absolute horrendous mushrooming growth. 
with very little control and very little thought about what the downside of that growth was. We were in the growth is good, bigger is better, the more people we have, uh, the less it will cost. But we were residential. We weren't where we are now with a, with a great deal of, of uh, industry, industrial and commercial growth. We were 95% residential. And residential growth in the first few years never pays for itself. This was gradually becoming more and more aware, especially to the average citizen taxpayer out there who saw as more people moved in, taxes went up. And that was the thrust of the majority of people who were elected to that board and took office in 1972. We had, as one example of the kind of way we were growing, I looked up some figures today, in the vehicle selling of vehicle tags, automobile, motorcycle, those kinds of things. In 1971, we sold 244,000 vehicle tags in Fairfax County. In 1975, four years later, we sold 322,000. I hate to think of how many we're selling now. I didn't want to look that one up. I figured that was too discouraging a figure. In 1971, there were five new members of the board. By the time I came along, it made six including Audrey Jack, Rufus Phillips, um, Jim Scott, Allen Magazine, and myself. We decided, I always have to say with, with one exception, <laughs> the board decided that what we needed was some sort of a moratorium on this exploding growth because we were so busy doing the zoning aspects of the county's growth, that there was no planning going on at all. The staff was overwhelmed with zoning applications. And of course, zoning applications are based solely upon the desire of the landowner and or developer. What is in their best interest, and it's up to the governing body to, I mean, I haven't used that term since I last saw you, Jay. <laughs> it's up to the elected officials to, to put some sort of form around that growth and do some planning and, and have something, some rational, long-range plan. And that's what, that's what the board tried to do. Thank you very much. As we left the 70s, we left them not totally fulfilled and not totally aware of what was transpiring. So we had to reach out and find someone that have, had a globalistic viewpoint. Unfortunately, we were unsuccessful. <laughs> Jack? <laughs> That's why Jay became county executive. Um, but I, it's true, I was elected to the board in 1971, along with Ms. Moore, and, uh, um, and uh, we had a, a very interesting board. Gene, I was not in the construction business, but my father happened to be an elevator construction mechanic. And in that, if you live in that household, no growth means no paycheck, no paycheck means nothing to eat. And so you're sort of conditioned to believe that uh, you know, some progress has to be made along the way. And on that board, I also happened to be the only Republican in residence, if that's what you call it. My chair was a, at the very end, and these long meetings. Far right. Far right. And I could doze off occasionally without being noticed because no one really gave a damn. <laughs> but uh, so at any rate, uh, and we did have some disagreements and agreements uh, during that period of time, and I could talk about those, but, uh, and that would be interesting. And, tell a few jokes about how Jay became county executive, uh, which was not accidental. Um, but he didn't come county, full county executive, he was acting county executive back then. So, uh, but, you know, during the, my first term on the board, uh, what happened basically is we lost every lawsuit that we filed in the courts. Lee Ruck was our county, uh, is that correct? We did not win one, if I recall? Not one. Uh, even though we were allegedly controlling growth, 
the residential building permits that set a record for the, that time in the county and think since uh, that ninth, four year period between 71 and 75. So when I was elected chairman, and I guess I was probably the only one serving and reelected that job, having quit or resigned or, you know, known that till later on, at least till they caught up with me, I guess 12 years later. But uh, the population was increasing. We had lost the court cases over a bundle of things, including how to had a phase growth in which didn't work because the court said it wouldn't work. It was all kinds of different things, but we didn't win. And we were growing a pace residentially. So I guess when I took office in 1976, I said, good heavens, we've got to do something here. Uh, and the major premise we started with is that we were going to grow. And the question is, were we going to be a wall to wall subdivision or whether we're going to have a tax base and job opportunities in this county? That was the issue. Well, one of the issues, the basic issue. So I guess the first meeting in January 1976, I made three motions, which I think became basic policy for the county for the next 12 years, uh, give and take, and was adopted in a bipartisan vote. Uh, Mr. Alexander and Mrs. Panino were, and the three Republicans who had since come on board with the, when I was elected chairman, Mrs. Uh, Tversky and Mr. Chicos, as I recall, uh, five votes. and. Uh, but the three motions were simply to set up a, and this was some revolutionary in local government in 1976 because uh, local governors were not at that time in actively engaged in promoting economic development. Then we set up a, a group to, headed by Norman Cole, the chairman of the state board, a control board, a report in uh, I think it was a month or two months, how to promote economic development, commercial industrial development for tax base and job opportunities. That was the first motion. The second motion was to take the sewer moratorium off. And third was to build I-66 inside the Beltway because the prior board had taken I-66 off the map inside the Beltway, uh, both not only the county map, but the whole regional map. So both of these motions, these are three motions that I think were the framework for what we did for 12 years, uh, or at least 10 of the 12 years anyway. Uh, and uh, we, pretty much kept a consensus of five votes on the board, and there were some shifting back and forth among, with some others. Uh, <clears throat> framework of public policy in this county uh, for that period of time. And uh, I think we were some, probably some people say we were too damn successful, uh, because that's what really caught up to us, I think, in 1987, over success and over a lot of revenue. Uh, but the perception became that we were uh, growing too fast, and that was, and people did not like that. So we also started at that time. We're talking about the Fairfax Parkway. Uh, I think we started actually started that in 1973, 74. So there was some idea that we might have this, you know, cross county problem back then, and some of us were uh, sort of actually working on that. But that uh, again was a framework that we operated this county on, a broad framework. I mean, there was obviously a lot of differences among a lot of things, but. That pretty much stayed pat for at least 10 years and somewhat to 12 years. And uh, we had, this was not a Jack Harry thing or a Republican thing, it was a bipartisan thing, uh, and the people supported it. Uh, obviously, because most of us were overwhelmingly reelected, uh, you know, uh, subsequent to that for the next decade or more. So uh, that's really where we were and what we did, and, uh, and, uh, we sort of kept the faith uh, through the whole uh, process, and uh, I think we were then and uh, still are a great county. And uh, again, uh, Jean said that uh, until they carry eight feet first, she's going to be here. Well, they tried to carry me eight feet first one time, and I didn't <laughs> go too easy. So uh, now I share those sentiments uh, with, with Jean. I thank you for the opportunity of being here this evening. County that had traditionally been a bedroom community go at warp speed, warp speed, into shopping centers, a homogeneous community of all of a sudden you had the Vietnamese community, the Spanish speaking community, etc., etc., etc. It was becoming a true urbanized county, and we were behind the curve. Or had the curve, has the curve been caught? No. Will the curve ever be caught? I think not. However, that is what was transpiring. 
I used to say, we can't keep this up. And I was wrong. Totally ignorant. Did not believe it. And it kept going and going and going. Then there was a resistance from the citizenry relative to the overall what, apparent policies to the county. And as politics are, things change. And our next speaker, I would say, if you had to define Audrey, you would say Audrey is indeed a change agent. You may not agree with Audrey, and many people don't. You may agree with Audrey, and many people do. But one thing about it, Audrey can stir it up. Audrey. <laughs> I think looking back at my life, the thing that I'm proudest of is having represented you and all the other people on the county on the Board of Supervisors. We really are a great people here. And I think that the government reflects that, both in the staff and the members of the board over time. You know, one of the things that would have been great if we'd had or we could have today is someone that could look at us and say, hey, you're not that different than every place else. These things happened other places before you, and these are the things that happened to them. It would be wonderful to have somebody like that. I don't know what, that they're for the finding. But that's one of the things I've discovered as I've gone around this country, is that we're not that different in a lot of ways than what happens other places. That the problems we have with planning and the arguments we have with the growth and the no growth and all that stuff, it's going on everywhere. I happen to be a planner, you know. I really believe in it. I grew up in the New York metropolitan area. I grew up in a nice part of that area. But you can't live in the New York metropolitan area and not know with great familiarity the places that aren't nice. And the traffic jams that I dealt with 40 years ago were far worse far worse than the problems that we have today here in Fairfax County. And so that was the future that I looked at, and I said, there's got to be a way that we can plan so that we don't have those kind of problems, so we can do better. And that's the perspective I came from. I ran for the board in 71, along with Jack, and Jean joined us later on. and began going around and talking to people, and pretty soon it was becoming quite apparent to me that what, what my constituents thought planning was, was when you zone the property, and when they build the houses, make sure they're just like ours. They cost the same as ours. The people that move in have kids just like ours, and we don't want it any different. That's what they meant by planning. And I began to think about it. Most of the people that moved here moved from the South, or they moved from other areas of Virginia or other parts of the United States that weren't like New York. People weren't living on top of each other. And there was no reason for people to have the strong feelings that I had about planning. So over the years, um, I think I got along with all the members of the board pretty well, but uh, they used to think I was a little far out sometimes, you know, and I probably was. In 1986, I began to notice something happening. All of a sudden, there seemed to be a groundswell of concern about growth. Now, I wasn't sure that it was all about planning, like I think of it, which is phasing and timing and seeing to it that your transportation comes along with your development and all that stuff. Um, but I could see that there was a concern building. And I thought, hey, this job of chairman, you know, we talk about it like when you get to be chairman, you're God. Uh-uh. You have one vote on the board, okay? And that man over there, whoever he is, has got far more power than all of you together because you simply can't do everything yourselves, and so you've got to delegate a great deal. And he also puts the budget together, and don't ever forget it. <laughs> so, in, in a way, politically, the chairman has the, almost the weakest position in a lot of ways. But I said, you know, there have got to be enough people across Fairfax County that care about planning 
to take advantage of this groundswell. You remember what was happening. Everybody was stuck in traffic, and they're trying to get to work, and they just missed the meeting that their boss told them they had to make. And all of a sudden, they look up in the horizon, they see a construction crane over there, and they see a construction crane over there, and one over there, and they say, what are these crazy people thinking of? Why are they doing this to us? That's what was going on. Stop it. Well, of course you couldn't stop it. And that was the problem for me and for the members of the board that were interested in this. It's an honor to be here. It's an honor to be here with all these folks. And uh, again, like Jay said, um, every single person I've served with, and even those people I haven't, you know, they really do have the, what's best for this county in mind. I think you do have good elected officials. And that's one thing that makes me feel bad is to hear all the bad things that I hear these days about elected officials. I think we've got some great ones here in Fairfax, and thanks a lot. We work together, all of us here. And as you see, Tom now has changed dramatically. He looks very uh, uh, professorial. <laughs> he looks to be a legitimate Hill politician. I'm certain that uh, if you look at he and Jack, you can tell which one's in Congress. <laughs> <laughs> I give you Tom. We have some golden opportunities here to, for job creation uh, that other regions don't. Uh, hosted a job fair last night at Tyson's Corner with Congressman Wolf, where we had over 1,000 uh, federal employees come in, you know, looking for some of the alternatives, and we had over 1,000 jobs available. The difficulty is the match between many of the employees who grew up under one set of rules and one educational standard, and their skills don't match what's in the marketplace now. And that's why it's so important for our universities and the new Virginia Tech, uh, Virginia uh, Center going to be in Falls Church, preparing our generations for the kind of jobs that will be available in this area in the uh, technology uh, field. Uh, Jay mentioned Dulles Airport. There is more room for expansion of Dulles Airport than any airport east of the Mississippi uh, River. And the potentials there for international trade, international business uh, are immense. We are now in basically a borderless economy, as you take a look at the, at the world today and, and nationally, and whether you're Fairfax or Arlington or Bethesda, uh, to, to some extent it almost doesn't matter because we have the critical mass, some of the things that are needed to support the economy we have in this region, but we need to recognize that and move ahead with policies that will continue to promote that, and that includes tax and regulatory policies, some of which are administered at the uh, uh, local level. Uh, I just mentioned gross receipts tax because that came up at a time when our economy was so much different than it was today. And there's a lot of rhetoric in this campaign, but you have to ask yourself what relevance that really has today with the type of economy we have today, if we're gonna stay competitive over the longer uh, period of time. Uh, I wanna mention just a couple of other things. Uh, tourism, uh, Audrey mentioned, I think we have just begun to scratch the surface of what we can do with tourism uh, in this area. Uh, Dulles Airport's part of it, a new convention center downtown where we can bring in national conventions that are now just bypassing this region in droves will make a big difference, not just for the central city, but for the suburbs as well. And yeah, we, you've heard, some of you heard me say this, we are the area that was the home of George Washington, the father of our country, the home of George Mason, the uh, uh, father of the author of the Bill of Rights, and the home of Tiny Hartman, the lead drummer for the Doobie Brothers, all right here in Fairfax. Uh, but we have some great opportunities here, and Major League Baseball, I think, will be another option that will help this region over the long term. I want to mention one other issue that didn't come up tonight that is critical for our future planning, and that's immigration. You know where the, you know where the frontier spirit exists today in America, the loss of the frontier? Just with tens of thousands of immigrants who have come from other countries, not looking for a handout, but just looking for freedom and an opportunity to grow and prosper. And whether it's at Bailey's Crossroads where I live, or Seven Corners, or Annandale, or further on out, there are small comp startup companies, there are retail firms, people who are working hard, putting their kids through the, the local schools, many of them through Thomas Jefferson, going to be running this county in another generation, who have a pioneer spirit and a belief in this country and the freedom that many of the rest of us have forgotten. I think we've got great opportunities in this region, but I think we can, we can improve on that, recognize what our natural attributes are, and build on that.
Chairman Kate Hanley will lead this current Board of Supervisors into the new millennium. Serving with her are Gerald W. Hyland, Vice Chairman, representing Mount Vernon District, Sharon Bulava, representing Braddock District, Gerald E. Conley, representing Providence District, Robert B. Dix, Jr., representing Hunter Mill District, Michael R. Frey, representing Sully District, Penelope A. Gross, representing Mason District, Dana Kaufman, representing Lee District, Elaine McConnell, representing Springfield District, and Stuart Mendelson, representing Drainfield District. The people you view here and others in this video are citizens just as yourselves. You have the right to share in the glories of Fairfax County's past, and even more important, the right to share in its future. Put these rights to good use. These rights were given to you by our very own citizen of high honor, George Mason, the father of the Bill of Rights.